Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Sam Suresh. I'm from Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. And this is for my first WordCamp in Singapore. And today my talk will be about uh, building your first mobile application using WordPress as a backend. So before I start, how many of you are a developer here? Can you raise up your hands? Great, because uh, sometimes people tend to abuse the word developer, so I'm going to ask this question again. How many of you are a developer who write codes? <laughs> Great. <laughs> All right, so uh, just before we move on about mobile application, WordPress powering 28% of websites in the world, according to the latest statistic from different uh, different companies like um, uh, like Alexa and browsers so WordPress evolved from being a block into a content management system I'm a technology instructor I teach people how to build website how to use technology stuff so the first thing when people heard of WordPress is they think it's a block so if you say you are building a WordPress intranet system, intranet system using WordPress, and they are just looking at you. Come on, are you building an intranet using WordPress? Because it's just a blog. So what, you know WordPress comes in two flavors, that WordPress.com and .org. So WordPress.org is about the CMS content management systems. That's where most of the volunteers are in. And now WordPress is evolving into apps platform. WordPress taking some drastic changes such as now you have this Gutenberg editor in WordPress and we have uh, REST API version 2 built in the core out of the box. And why you should use WordPress as apps platform? Before I press it further, how many of you have built your mobile applications? One, two, three, great. So today I'm going to show you how to build your first mobile application. Even though you are not a programmer, a coder, anyone can build a mobile application. Why WordPress has backend for mobile application? Because WordPress is really a powerful and most popular content management system. 28% that means you can get support, you can get documentation, tutorials, in a single Google or just read the documentations. WordPress has built in REST API, more than 52,000 plugins available in WordPress plugin repository. So any feature you can imagine, you don't have to uh, build on your own. Just go to wordpress.org slash plugins, extend it, extend it. And you can simply output that by writing a single page API uh, make it as a JSON and you can call it in your mobile application. WordPress can be used for e-commerce, user management system, content management system, or anything you name it because there's custom content types so you can create any kind of sites using WordPress. And the most importantly, WordPress use KISS concept. Keep it simple and stupid. So you don't have to really learn a lot of complex pages, complex things to get started with WordPress. Anybody can get started with WordPress because it's really simple and you just extend it any features that you need if it is required for you. If it's not, just go ahead, what's coming the core. So maintaining a custom backend is a lot of work and it can be really difficult. Have you seen these animations when the MGM movie starts? I believe all of you have seen this, right? So those days, if you have the old movies, and this is the animation that will be played before the movie. And have you imagined what is in the back end? <laughs> so it's not really easy to maintain a back end. It can get this complicated. Um, it's just because uh, if it's a simple back end, that's fine. Imagine you, you need to maintain a user directory with a lot of users. And uh, if you are building your, your own back end, that sometimes can be very clean and very efficient. But 
if you want to add on a feature or you want to maintain it, so that takes a lot of efforts. So you can use WordPress as a backend. Uh, today I'm going to show you how to pull contents using REST API and display on your mobile app and package it for iOS and Android and submit to Play Store or App Store. Building your mo own mobile application, there's various technology available to build your own mobile application. You can go for native application or hybrid applications. If you want to build a native application for Android, you need to learn Java. Or you can include C++ that you learned during your college times into the Java and compile it as an app. Or if you want to build an app for iPhone, you need to learn Swift or Objective-C. So if you want to cater these two major platforms, and don't ask me about Windows Phone, I don't think anyone using Windows Phone except Microsoft employees. So if you want to cater both platforms, you need to master two different programming language. That is native application development. But native application development has its own benefits. And there's another technology called hybrid, which is using HTML5, uh, your common technologies that you use in web development such as HTML, CSS, JavaScript. So you can use the technology that you already familiarize with to design your mobile application. This is a comparison between native and hybrid. In a native app, it uses the direct API of the native, your device API, so it can interact directly with your device. If you are building a HTML based application, it is running in a shell or in a browser that you don't actually see. So it's just kind of like a website that's running within your app. But it will look like a native application. Performance-wise, native, of course, faster and better. And hybrid is kind of slow. But it's depending on how you optimize. There are a lot of optimization uh, uh, ways available. So you can just optimize your app and can make it faster. Look and feel, native, have a native look and feel. The buttons, the input boxes, the texts will look like exactly like Android interface or iPhone interface. Whereas in a hybrid, you need to like uh, do some styling CSS and you're just cheating the cosmetic. And it looks like iPhone view, but actually it's not iPhone view. It's just by the CSL or SCSS converting that into a, a native view. Distribution, both, both applications can be distributed using Google Play Store or Apple App Store. Uh, notification, and you can see some other uh, comparisons there. So in the end, you see the development skill required to develop hybrid application is using HTML, CSS, JavaScript, which you use to customize your teams in WordPress, right? How many of you are good in HTML, CSS? Or you can actually alter some HTML and CSS? Great. So you can build the application now. So this is the capability overview of native and hybrid. When you are building a native application, you have full capability of the native application. And um, and when you are building a hybrid application, you still have the full capability, but you can export to multiple platform, whereas native, you can only export to one single platform. So hybrid application benefits. You can reuse existing skills in web development into the mobile application, reduce cost of development, so you don't have to hire two different programmers with two different skill sets. Same programmer, one code base, you can export to different platforms. So that's true. You can build application without learning native programming languages. But being a web developer, sometimes I can be biased towards the uh, hybrid application. It's always your call whether you want to go for native or hybrid. Uh, some application is really good to be developed uh, in native programming languages, especially when you have a lot of communication with hardware. Hybrid application can communicate with hardware as well using Kodoa plugins. So there's thousands of plugins available you can install. You can communicate with cameras. You can communicate with sensors. So you can easily get started with um, hybrid applications uh, and emulate as a native application. 
So now let's look at what are the technology used to develop hybrid application. Let's say you want to develop a hybrid mobile application. All right, that's, I guess the other session just ended and I'm all just past about 10 minutes here. <laughs> okay, welcome to everyone just joining in. <laughs> okay, hybrid application technologies. So you can develop a mobile application using PhoneGap. PhoneGap is an open source platform that allow you to build mobile application using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And then you can compile using PhoneGap build by Adobe. It's free for one app. So you can delete that app, you rebuild the same app again, and you can get it done. And then uh, we have Ionic framework. It's an open source framework and built by Ionic team. Of course, they have paid head-on services such as Ionic Creator and Ionic View, Ionic Pro, Ionic Dashboard Pro. There are some paid services available. So if you don't want to write a single line of code, you still can build apps by using Ionic Creator. And we have some other technologies such as Zamarin by Microsoft. I don't use any product made by Microsoft usually except Excel because that's one of the amazing innovation by Excel, by Microsoft. So you can use Zamarin as well. It's, they have interface similar to Android Studio and you can build a, a, a hybrid application. But uh, when it's built by a corporate company, the, the, the open source community became uh, limited. So not much growth you can see in the future. And Framework 7 is open source framework, uh, not uh, really popular compared to uh, PhoneGap and Ionic. Intel SDK, one of my favorite tool. Please check it out. You can download from Intel website. It's a free tool. You can drag and drop, build your mobile application using Bootstrap. Unfortunately, this is not open source of freeware, and Intel dropped support for Intel SDK since the beginning of 2017. Uh, so it's really sad. Uh, they're going to sunset this software in coming years, maybe two or three years later. So today I'm going to show you using Ionic framework. Why? Because it's most popular framework among all the technologies that we have to build a hybrid mobile application. PhoneGap is another technology that's actually uh, as popular as Ionic, but why Ionic? Here it is. Ionic uses a front-end UI that the look and feel looks like a uh, native application. So when you build using Ionic framework, your application will look like a native application. And Ionic comes with tons of Interfaces. These are the interfaces in Ionic. You can see these are the startup screen for your app, buttons, everything you can imagine, just like Bootstrap. I'm sure many of you know what Bootstrap is, right? So Bootstrap is just a framework. You get it from Bootstrap, getbootstrap.com. You build your website. So you don't have to write CSS, JavaScript to create buttons, boxes, and whatever UI elements already built in. And people maintain it. People troubleshoot the grid system, everything in there. So Ionic is the same thing, but for your mobile application. It's just like Bootstrap, but for your mobile application. Everything is already built in, the components, the, the stylings, everything. You copy the code and place it in, and you get started. So that's why Ionic is getting more popular. And Ionic team believes that HTML5 is going to rule the mobile application in the future because everyone can use it. Why most of us use WordPress today? Because WordPress is, again, like I said, is case is keep it simple so you can, anybody can get started with a little basic knowledge on how to control your mouse and how to click things in your browser. So Ionic uh, also support a broad range of native mobile components like slick anima animations and also you can in in install whatever Cordova plugins available as Ionic also using Cordova engine just like PhoneGap. So when you are comparing PhoneGap and Ionic, if you are using Ionic, you get Cordova, you get Cordova plugin, plus you get all the user interfaces, the amazing user interfaces in just one line of code. 
So building a, a hybrid application with Ionic, you need two skill set. The first one is basic HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Ionic using Angular JavaScript type as well as TypeScript. So that is uh, new. Uh, maybe if you are not familiar with this, you need to learn Angular a little bit uh, so you can customize uh, or you can just read the documentation in Ionic. There's documentation for everything. How to add a page, how to add a menu, how to add a splash screen, how to add a plugin. Everything is documented. There's examples available. You need to have some basic knowledge of command line tools. So how to open command line and how to run command line and how not to kill your Macintosh or computer using command line. Uh, like remove recursively so that can remove your entire hard disk maybe the data in your disk so be careful of that but if you have no idea about command line tool no problem there's uh, one other technology called ionic creator drag and drop on in interface on the web base you can it's a cloud technology you can use it this is ionic creator but it's limited for one application you can build one application in Ionic Creator. I'm just having a demonstration video recorded last night in my hotel room. So <laughs> this is Ionic Creator. You just start an account, go to creator.ionic.io, start an account, create a new app. And you can see when you started your app, your app is already there with three different tabs. So you can just customize the tab colors and the tab names. You can add more pages. You can add icons. You can add all the elements. You can see the elements on the left bottom. So there's a lot of different elements. Um, obviously, the video is a bit slow. So um, I guess I'm going to skip the video because of uh, time. The, the time I have is just left about 15 minutes to go. So, I'll share these slides later. You can play back this video, the full video, how to create and how to export it. Once you export from here, you get a source code which you still need to build because designing a mobile application is two phase. The first phase is designing your application. Second phase is building, compile it in, into installable package which is like APK or IPA. APK is for Android, IPA is for iPhone. So that's like uh, images and everything. I'm just doing drag and drop without writing a single line of code. Okay, so now let me show you how to install Ionic on your computer and get started and pull content from WordPress and display it. So every time you update a post on WordPress, that content will appear on your mobile application in your client. So you no need to build your mobile application or update your mobile application again, again, and again. So first thing is you need to install Node.js before starting with Ionic. So just Google Node.js, download Node.js, Install it, get it done. There's full tutorial in the Node.js website itself. Once you install Node.js, you can run these two commands in your command line tool. So Ionic can be installed on Windows as well as on Macintosh. Most of my commands here are for Mac based. Uh, the commands are slightly different for, for uh, Windows. You can refer these commands, the same command from Ionic documentation. Uh, it's just don't run sudo in Windows. I don't think Windows shells accept sudo. So to create your first application, first of all, I'm going to CD my location on my desktop, and I just type ionic start. Just one line of command. So let's see how it works. This is my command line, so I'm going to CD my desktop. That means my application will appear on my desktop over here. And I'm just starting Ionic Start. So what would you like name your project? So I'm call it SamPress, just like WordPress. So you see there's a different options available now. Whether you want to start mobile application with pre-built template given by Ionic, tab, site menu, or tutorial, or uh, conference, there's a full stack conference applications available as a sample. You can just get started. Just pick one. And then the code going to download the codes required. And now you can see the folder is created on my desktop. It's just one line of code. I'm just running Ionic Start, and I got my application created right in here on my desktop. And I'm opening this folder, and this is the code structure. Downloaded from GitHub and created on my, on my desktop. So now there's another feature called Ionic Lab. 
this is my second command. I'm going to run the second command, ionic surf dash L for lab. So what ionic surf does is it's going to emulate the application on my computer. So I'm going to clear the code and I'm going to run ionic serve dash lab. And again, it's going to start a, a, a lab environment that allow you to preview your app as you build. So let's say you are changing a content on your application, you can preview it directly on Ionic Lab. See, the browser is opened, and you have a choose platform on the right top. You can switch to Windows, ops, no. You can switch to iPhone or Android, uh, as well as Windows if you want to. And you can build something. So I'm going to open a file which is the pages. You see the pages, just like HTML pages. I'm going to open the home page, home.html, and I'm dragging to my Atom editor there. You can use Atom Sublime or any editor, your preferred uh, text editor, or even Notepad if, you, if you're good at it. So I'm just clearing my content, the, the, the basic uh, Hello World boilerplate contents, and I'm just saving that. So what happens is when I save this and when I go back, you see it's building automatically and it's showing me the latest, uh, the, uh, the latest uh, status of my applications. So you don't need to have an iPhone to build an iPhone application anyway. So uh, now let's look at WordPress API, how you can integrate your mobile application with WordPress. So there's a step one, step two, step three. So these three steps actually, um, these, are, these are the codes actually. I'm just creating a Ionic card or Ionic list item here. And I'm just going to amend, I'm going to fetch the title and the content extract from my WordPress website. And in the second code, I'm going to add a HTTP module in the Angular so it can call the uh, HTTP service. And in the third step, I'm adding, uh, there's a code here. Uh, when you get my actual slide, you can get the codes in full. That's just a single page code that calling my REST API from my WordPress. So this is a short video about the uh, the three slides that I've shown in the step one and two. So I'm running again Ionic Serve dash L. So now my mobile application preview will be started. So here it is, my mobile application. And now I can, I can see all my WordPress posts. Once I place the three codes, these are the WordPress posts taken from 2017.kualalumpur.wordcamp.org. So this is uh, WordCamp Malaysia that we are organizing next month, 25th in Kuala Lumpur. It is taking these three posts from WordCamp website and it's displaying on my mobile application. So this is the actual site. You can see this is a WordCamp website uh, in Malaysia. And these are the three posts I have on the home site. And these are the exact three posts. But there's one problem in here that when I click the details of the post, so I'm getting some errors because there is no post detail page. So to add a new page in Ionic, there's again just one single line command and I'm, I'm attaching three different codes to get the details page is slotted. So now I'm showing you my final application, which are plus or minus just seven or eight steps to come out with this application. So this is a running Ionic Surf again. So it's going to compile my code and going to preview on the browser. Okay, so now I have the post detail page. So I'm going to click on one of the title. There it is. I can read the full post now. Full WordPress post within my mobile application. So what happened is that once I compile to my application and people install it, the next time I post new mobile, new post on my WordPress website, they, can, they will be able to read it. And there's a plugin called One Signal Push Notification. If you install this in your mobile application and in your WordPress, next time you make a new post, 
your users will get a push notification on their mobile device. That's a new post available. WordCamp Malaysia just made a new post available. So make sure you subscribe to WordCamp Malaysia. And now how to export as a, an application. Once you finish your design phase with the seven step that I outlined before this, now of course you want to export as an installable mobile application. If you want to install, uh, export it, IPA is for iPhone, APK is for Android. I repeat again for those just coming a bit late or on time. I'm, I'm early actually. So to, to, if you are building on an Ionic framework, you can export into Android or uh, Apple devices or even Windows devices. So you just build one application, you export to multiple devices when you are compiling. So you don't have to build for Apple, you don't have to build for Android, you don't have to build for Windows unless you have money to do that. So to build is, uh, once you finish your design phase, now you want to compile as an installer, you have two options, whether you go with command line interface or you go with phone gap build. Phone gap build is a service by Adobe. You need to pay for it if you want to make a private application, but if you want to make an open application, it's free. Or you can do this, they allow you one free application, so you just upload it, compile it, download your installable application and delete it. Or you can make it open source as well. Upload it, compile it, delete it again. So no one else uh, get your code or if it's a private application, again, uh, looks like PhoneGap love open source. So if you are open source, it's free. So I'm going to show you how to build using PhoneGap because uh, this is the most easiest for most of you because if you're using a CLI, you need to run on Mac in order to compile an uh, Apple iPhone application. So you can't compile Apple iPhone application in Windows uh, unless you have a remote Mac that you can connect and compile it. Or nowadays they have a lot of uh, hosted services that, uh, but I don't still find a way even though you are compiling PhoneGap to submit to Play Store, you still need to application loaders to submit it. So somewhat Apple forcing you to buy an Apple device. So there is five steps uh, to, to submit to uh, phone gap build to compile as a phone gap build. The first of all, you need to get Apple account, uh, sorry, it's an Adobe account. So make sure you just uh, register as Adobe ID or you probably already have an Adobe ID when you download Photoshop trial and keep on using it as a trial forever. So use that ID to log into phone, build.phonegap.com and this is the interface that you can upload the package that you have built on Ionic Framework. I just skipped one other slide before this that shows a slight modification need to make for one file because Ionic is building for Ionic CLI and now you're using for phone gap, so a little changes need to be made for your config. But if you go through my slide, it will be useful to understand it when you're actually doing it. So now when I'm presenting, I'm going to speak, uh, skip some of the technical details, so it will be useful when actually, uh, it won't be really useful for those you're not following as a practical now. So it, I just uploaded the package to phone gap build and you see it is compiling, uploading, once I upload it, it shows my application there, Sam Press. That's my application name. I don't, up, I don't have any uh, icon. You can actually generate icons and put it on the config file and then your icon will be there. iOS is red, Android is building now. And once Android is built, yeah, that's blue. I can click on the Android and there it is. It is downloading my APK already. Use this APK, you need to sign this APK and then you can submit to Play Store. For iOS, in order to compile iOS, you need uh, Apple certificate and provisioning files, which you will get from uh, Apple, developer.apple.com. Uh, if you actually paid them $100 every year, you will get it. So Apple's developer account costs uh, $99 yearly, uh, whereas Android developer account costs $25 one off. So it's a lifetime account for Android. And you can just build an Android application uh, without even having certificate. You can generate your own certificate. It's just one command to generate your certificate. It's called key stars in Android. So you just generate key star and sign with this command. And once you generate, you can submit to Apple Play Store already. 
But uh, for iPhone, you need to get the key, uh, provisioning file. They don't call it key store. It's a provisioning file and certificate from Apple developer account. And when you submit it, they're going to go through very tedious verification process. Probably uh, you need to spend a lot of time to make sure your app is proper. Even the spellings, the contents, everything is proper. They're going to check uh, inch by inch before they publish it on Apple App Store. Uh, whereas in Android, it's more flexible. So you just make sure you follow all the trademark guidelines, security guidelines, then your app is on App Store. So that's how you export your app. And if you are interested to see more examples, uh, I don't want to build from scratch. Can I just start from something that somebody has already built? Just like all the WordPress people, we all always test this by downloading a template and install the demo and learn from there. So you can do that as well for Ionic. Uh, we have starters for Ionic. It's called starters. Uh, in WordPress, we call it demo content. You just import demo contents. And I, in Ionic, we call it starters. Just go to Ionic, dot, uh, Ionic framework .io and then click on the marketplace. This is marketplace. I'm not affiliated with this marketplace. I don't get any commission to say this. So it's just a, a hint for you how to get started quickly. You can just get any one of these starters, and there's a lot of starters packages already available. I mean, application that people already build with WordPress, with other CMS, with uh, many other geolocation sensors, cameras, just download it and run the Ionic Surf L. You got your application ready. Just make changes, whatever changes you need. Or if you are very familiar with Envato Marketplace for your WordPress themes, Go to Code Canyon, search Ionic Starter. There's a lot of Ionic full featured apps. You can just rebrand it and upload it. That's cheating anyway. So if you're interested to build a WordPress login application, just now I show you how to pull content. If you want to people log in with the same user ID and password they use in your WordPress website, you can look at this example uh, built by Con Connor W there, a user in GitHub. Uh, it's on Ionic 2 actually, but Ionic 2 and 3 is very identical, not much change, so you can just upgrade it to Ionic 3 using uh, JSON Web Tokens. So you can just log in using J JSON Web Tokens using the same username and password. So your users can have a very uh, interactive applications, and you don't need to have a different database for the user logins and so on. And uh, there's another example available by Julian. Uh, he built this amazing framework, WordPress hybrid client using Ionic. So in this, uh, it's, it's again a starter actually. In this starter, you already have all these features. You can see you can pull your post pages, custom posts, taxonomies, orders. You can also search, there's push notifications, social sharing, a lot of features. It's free and it's open source you can just get started your application with WordPress using this. Uh, but there's one limitation in this is that this only works in Mac and Linux. So if you are running on Windows, probably you can't use this because some of the plugins that you use is not supported by Windows command line. All right, so that's how you um, build your mobile application using Ionic framework and submit it to Apple or Android platforms. Thank you so much. My name is Sam Suresh. You can check out the slide at samshua.sh. Thank you, Sam. That was a really techy, 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 high techy <laughs> <laughs> information. I hope it's all sacked down in your heads. Uh, it was really informative. Mm, thank you very much. Uh, well, yes, uh, so you mentioned that your slides will be available, right? Right. So yes, if uh, some of you must have missed the first part of his talk, so yeah, you can refer to the slides. He will be making it available. All right. So we are open to the Q&A for uh, 10 minutes now. So you have all the 10 minutes. You can ask a lot of questions because it was a lot of informative talk. I am hoping you have a lot of questions. Anybody? Any questions? None at all? All right. Hi, uh, thanks for the great talk. I was wondering uh, if there's any limitations when it comes to using Ionic and HTML5, and if there are any features that you would absolutely have to do it on native, for example, GPS or this kind of thing. So what's your opinion on what cannot be done? 
Uh, thank you. It's a good question. Actually, there's no uh, limitation when you go for a hybrid application. In fact, when you're looking at a uh, native application, some of the features are actually, if it's, you need to write in a way that you are writing for a hybrid application as well. So uh, the only limitation is that it runs in a shell. So sometimes when you're running a very complex process, it can get crashed. But I know some of airlines using Malindo Air, if you know, heard of Malindo Air Malaysia, Indonesia, it's an Indonesian company. So they use this um, uh, hybrid, so airlines using hybrid, uh, big marketplaces using hybrid. So you can communicate with hardware, camera, GPS, whatever you want. The only thing that I see lacking is the speed. If just they have a different container, just like Ionic now use a native container compared to PhoneGap and other things. So when you're using Ionic, you feel like it's totally like native. So that's the beauty about Ionic. Thank you, Sam. Any more questions? Yes. Have you ever tried pulling from different webs, web WordPress sites to go to that? Uh, mobile app yes you can do that so just like uh, I did for home page I'm pulling from WordCamp a Malaysia website and I'm listed it so these three codes it's within my home folder so let's say you have another folder is WordCamp Singapore folder is another page that a menu on your mobile phone people click on Singapore and they're looking at WordCamp Singapore and on that page you alter the same code but with different URL. By default, all WordPress sites have the REST API enabled out of the box. So you don't have to do anything in your WordPress and just replace the URL with the same code in a different page. There you go. That page is going to pull content from different uh, different page. But you can get same uh, content, uh, different pages content in the same page as well. Just need to make some modification in your how your JavaScript is calling that contents. All right. Thank you, Sam, again. Thank you, everyone.